So in the next few slides, uh, I want to go over some examples uh, design um, that have been um, you know, put into the processors to improve the overall performance. Let's start with this superscalar execution. Uh, as we can imagine, we have a program, um, uh, let's say a C program, it, um, the compilers will convert this C program into assembly and eventually to binary. So when the computers look at this program, it's a stream of binary instructions. And between these instructions, some of them, there are dependencies um, uh, exist. So you have to you know, respect these dependencies because if you violate them, uh, your program will um, deliver incorrect result. And we would like to make the software developer's life easier um, in a way that they don't have to worry about where they're going to execute their program. They can assume that a well-designed processor will execute their program correctly. Um, and of course, um, the higher performance, the, the better. But the basis is the correctness of the program is ensured by the processors. Um, now, in this way, the processors uh, actually have the responsibility to try to look at the binary instructions to see whether we can do something um, smart to um, execute the instructions um, earlier or execute several instructions at the same time at the hardware level, instruction level. So what people have been trying to do is to use control logics to extract parallelism from the binary code and they do this automatically within the CPU processor uh, hardware. Uh, let's look at this example. We have uh, instruction stream A. We have five instructions. We have um, add A comma B a comma C. So let's assume that the first operand is the destination operand. So what we're doing is we are adding the value from B and C and put the result into A and assuming these are all uh, in registers. So we have uh, the second instruction, D comma B comma E. Um, if we look at these two instructions, uh, we don't see any dependencies between these first two instructions because um, B and C and E are all you know, uh, source operand. So the processor will read values from them and the destination Operand is A and D respectively, um, so there's no you know, no conflict. So we say there's no dependencies. Uh, but if you look at uh, between first instruction and third instruction, um, we have the third instruction as a multiplier. Uh, the destination operand is F, the source operand is A and E. Now this A is uh, the source operand, so multiply instruction we'll have to read the value from A, which will be produced by this first instruction, add. So the third instruction cannot start execution until the first one completes, uh, generate the result, and put that result to A. And so this clearly is a dependency here. So the third instruction, multiply F, A, E, um, depends on the first instruction. We we'll use this arrow to indicate that there is dependency. And similarly, we can find out there are dependency between the first instruction and the fourth instruction, and dependency between the fourth instruction and the fifth instruction, and so on. So this is a dependency uh, graph. Now, what does this dependency graph tell us? It tells us that uh, we cannot execute um, this add ABC with this multiply FAE together at the same time. However, it also tells that um, we can possibly execute the first instruction at ABC with this multiply instruction, the second instruction together because there's no dependency. Similarly, there's no dependency between the third instruction and the fourth instruction. And based on this dependency graph, um, the processor, uh, the control logics, will try to do something smart. 
due due to the fact that there's no dependency between the first and, and second instruction, so we can schedule the first instruction and second instruction together. Now here's the assumption we make. We assume that there are um, you know these um, uh, multiple um, ALUs, integer arithmetic units. Uh, so this first instruction will use one of them, and second instruction will use the other one. And, and because we have sufficient functional units, ALUs, so we are able to execute the first two instructions at the same time if this uh, control logic is smart enough to find out there's no dependency. And indeed, these uh, control logics are designed to do that uh, discovery. So it finds out which instructions do not have dependencies. So they will schedule them at the same time. So you can see that instead of you know, spending five cycles uh, to execute these five instructions, if we can schedule them, these two together, these two together, we only need three cycles. Well, we make you know assumption that these each instruction takes the same number of cycle, uh, which is one. But in reality, this floating point multiplier will take much longer than the integer. So this is the example of uh, superscalar execution. Uh, also, we want to point out that um, in this example, as we see here, there's no branch instructions, so all the instructions will be executed. Anyway, but if there is a branch instruction, then we're talking about the possibility of you know, not executing some of them. But branch instructions typically are resolved at a later stage based on the conditions. So there's a chance that you will probably execute um, some instructions um, earlier, but eventually find out that they should not be executed. So we call this kind of execution is speculative execution. It expands the out of order window because it looks further beyond um, call it, uh, basic block. It looks further beyond a branch instruction. It tries to um, be aggressive, but uh, it has to be careful when the branch instruction is resolved and also um, decide the several instructions should not be executed. So, in that case, it has to um, void those instructions. Second example uh, of the architectural design in uh, general pur purpose processors is this so called very long instruction word. Uh, it's VLSI uh, in short. So, on the previous slide, we looked at how the processor internally uh, can detect the dependency and schedule instructions uh, if there's no dependency. And that makes the uh, programmer and also the compiler um, design easier. In contrast, this VRIW is uh, kind of shifting the responsibility to compilers. What we want the compiler to do is to look at the source code, figure out uh, at the compilation stage what instructions can be executed uh, together at the same time. And we do that in hope to make the um, processor design simpler. So on the microprocessor, we do not have to have a large amount of control logic to detect dependencies, perform out of order execution, perform those uh, speculative execution. With this compiler support, uh, hopefully we can discover uh, the um, chances that we can execute multiple instructions. And if we do uh, have that opportunity, uh, the compiler will um, generate um, long instruction word, which uh, comprises multiple instructions to be issued in parallel. So to um, show you the example, um, this again here we have five instructions. Uh, but different from the, in the previous example, these five instructions are already scheduled by the compiler in kind of groups. 
um, because there's no dependency between this add ABC and multiply DBE. So these two are put into one long instruction word, which has you know, uh, upper code, upper end, upper code, and upper end, etc. And similarly, we have the second instruction, the long instruction a word with uh, two instructions in it. And the, the final one, we have another instruction word uh, which has only one instruction. So these instruction screen um, will be fetched and then decoded. Uh, and also, because we know this is a very long instruction word, so the decoder unit is different from the previous one. And um, you know, without using um, complex control logic to do runtime checking, we can um, perform these um, executing these instructions together uh, at the same time. So compare again, compare with the previous diagram, previous example. Um, this very long instruction word shifts the uh, responsibility to compilers. Uh, so before we run this program, compiler will try to discover what are the opportunities to execute instructions at the same time and pack these instructions within this long instruction word. And of course, if you look at this long instruction word, imagine that you have three possible instructions in this long instruction word. There are places, there are empty spots because it's not guaranteed that your program will always have these three spots filled in every very long instruction word. So that in that case, there's uh, some waste um, in terms of the um, execution unit. Thank you.